Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. We're picking up where we left off in part one. We're looking for roots for this polynomial. Uh, using our analogy, we're digging for truffles. Okay, so part one, we left off on the PQ theorem. PQ theorem says, look, instead of looking at a needle in a haystack, I can give you a possible number of solutions. And from this set of solutions, all you have to do is test it. You can record it back in there. You can use synthetic division and figure out uh, roughly which one is your first guess for roots. Once you have a first guess, what you can do is you can rewrite this f of x in form of x minus this root 1 times another polynomial. For our case, it happened to be quadratic because by reducing power of 1 from cube, we can result in a quadratic. And from here, we can use quadratic formula to finish the rest of the roots. Okay, this is a huge lifesaver. So this PQ theorem says, look, grab the coefficient of P over Q. Now here's the interesting part. PQ theorem is upside down in that, think of it as snake, okay, snake. I don't know how good the snake is. You grab the coefficient on the bottom first. This is actually the P part, this is the Q part. So the prince follows the queen, okay? So plus minus four, and all its possible factors, plus minus two, plus minus one, because four has possible factors of one and two in there. And Q is minus two, so you have plus minus one, plus minus two. Okay, that looks like a lot of possibilities, but what's the alternative? You're gonna have to look at the entire set of numbers, which is infinite, okay? This is actually, or at least this limited. So over the years, I tell my students, the best way you can actually organize it is this. You write it out, P is plus minus four, okay? Plus minus one, plus minus two, and that's it. Q on this side, you have plus minus one, plus minus one, plus minus one. And then for the second set, you repeat the same thing for factors of P, and then you do plus minus two, plus minus two, plus minus two on this side, because that's the Q. And this would reduce you down to um, a set of what, six or eight numbers, plus minus four is one of them, plus minus one is one of them, plus minus two is one of them. This one give you plus minus two again, we don't want that one. This plus minus one again, here's a unique one, which is plus minus half. Okay, so basically we have eight possibilities to go through. I know it looks tedious, but then again, what's the alternative? Okay, infinite versus eight, I would choose eight all the time. Okay, so our next task is to see which one among those eight numbers actually give me a root. Okay, once I have the root, I can figure out what the quadratic is. So my goal is to rewrite this complicated polynomial into x minus this root I found among the eight choices I have, eight candidates I have, okay, times a polynomial of order two. All right, so let's get started. Um, you have method one, you can use long division. If this one raises your hair, that should be, it's pretty complicated and messy. Method two, you can use uh, evaluate f of x with x equal to plus minus four, plus minus one, plus minus two, and plus minus half, which is not too bad. It's a little work, but um, something you can handle, okay? Now, my favorite one is actually using synthetic division. Okay, we'll show this one uh, with one of the roots. Maybe <clears throat> you'll see that it, both methods actually give you the same thing. All right, <clears throat> uh, synthetic division. So let's try one. Let's see x equal to one. X equal to one. Okay. So I'll see if x equal to one. If it's x of one, if it's equal to zero, then that means it's a root for this polynomial. Unfortunately, f of one, if you plug it in there, uh, I end up with a positive three. Using synthetic division, 
uh, hopefully you know how to do this one. If you don't, go on my channel and type in synthetic division. There should be a um, a video there. So uh, what I will do here is just basically write it down. So minus two comes down here. This one times this one gets over here. I have a minus seven. Minus seven times one is this one is. Uh, let's see, minus one here, minus one here, plus three. As you can see, I actually end up exactly the same. It's not a mystery. Um, if we have time, we might actually go through it. But the point is, look, if f of one is not equal to zero, and then x one is not the root. Similar here, if the remainder here is three and not zero, that means f of one or x one is not a root. Okay. All right. Now, if you keep on doing this one, uh, as I had done before, ahead of time, I, I went on the computer. I said, okay, Wolfgram computer, tell me what happens when f of minus four, minus uh, two, two, four, half, and minus half. Well, the computer calculated as you can see here. You can push a pause it if you have trouble seeing it. But anyway, the computer calculated f of half is actually equal to minus half, actually, equal to zero. Okay, so we found our first root using p over q theorem. Okay, this is a big deal because now my old polynomial of minus two x cubed uh, minus five x squared plus six x plus four all of a sudden can be rewritten as x minus this root, okay, so times something else. So in our case, it's x minus minus half times something else, which we can use synthetic division to fi figure out in part three. It's equal to x plus half. Like I said, in part three, we'll go through this one uh, more carefully. But for now, this particular problem uh, we have minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay, so we'll pick up where we left off over here in part 3. All right?